orchestra. That was beautiful. This is Sarah Chancellor. Sarah is nine years of age. She lives in Seoul, Korea, but her family are a part of our church, and they'll be living here again one of these days. Sarah has given her life to Christ. She's professing her faith now. She's talked with Pastor Kim, as we like for our children to do, and we are convinced she is ready for this. Sarah, who is Jesus to you? He is my Lord. Sarah, on your profession of faith in Jesus, it's with great joy. I baptize you, my sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Buried with Christ in baptism, rise to walk in newness of life. Lord, we've done as you've commanded us, and still there is room. The psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Would you stand and let's worship together?
We're glad you're here today. Would you welcome those around you to worship? people said amen thank you I'm so glad you're here today you've come on a perfect Sunday and we're worshiping the Lord the best we know how from our hearts if you're our guest special welcome to you thank you for coming our way take a moment and fill out one of our communication cards if you don't mind hold on to it and then put it in the offering plate a little later is the group from Unity Baptist in Hope Arkansas here are you in the house Back there in the back, a youth group visiting our city, and we're delighted to have you for all the way from Hope, Arkansas. Okay, you'll want to speak to them before they get out this morning. Well, we just had a fabulous week of Vacation Bible School. We had the biggest and the best I can remember, and God answered every one of our prayers, and we give him the praise and glory for it all. And we'll be seeing the fruit of it for weeks and even years to come. But in our world this week, it's just been one, uh, one great tragedy after another, and it seems like chaos is engulfing our planet. Many are in despair, but we're not. We're people of hope, and our church stands for hope. 
So as we begin our service today, I want us to pray for this service, but let's pray for our world too. God in heaven, we give you thanks for every blessing. Thank you for meeting with us this week in this place and doing a wonderful work. Thank you for what you're doing in the lives of each one here today. As we sing and we pray and we listen, we pray that your will will be done in this room and all that are watching, that our hearts might be rightly tuned to your spirit. We pray for our world today. It seems like it's falling apart, but we trust in you. We know that the ultimate answer is found only in Christ, and we pray that soon the world will know. Help us to be lights in this world of darkness. It's in the name of Christ we lift our prayer. Amen. Our saints bound for heaven when the roll is called up yonder. I'll be there, and I hope that you'll be there, and that you rejoice in heaven being prepared for you. Would you stand and let's sing these great gospel songs?
you so much. You know that I'm going to view that holy city, oh, I'm going to view that holy city one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to view that holy city. I'm going to view that holy city one of these days, one of these days. You know that I'm going to meet my love in Jesus, oh, I'm going to meet my love in Jesus one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to meet my love in Jesus. I'm going to view that holy city. I will meet my love in Jesus one of these days. One of these days, you know that I'm going to sit at the welcome table. Oh, I'm going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to sit at the welcome table. I'm going to view that holy city. I will meet my love in Jesus. We're going to sit at the welcome table one of these days. One of these days. Yes, I'm going to feast on the milk and honey, oh, I'm going to feast on the milk and honey one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm going to feast on the milk and honey. I'm going to view that holy city and I will meet my love in Jesus. We're going to sit at the welcome table. We will feast on the milk and honey one of these days, one of these days. You know that I'm going to sing and never get tired, oh. Gonna sing and never get tired one of these days. Hallelujah. I'm gonna sing and never get tired. I'm gonna view that holy city. And I will meet my love in Jesus. We're gonna sit at the welcome table. We will feast on milk and honey. Sing and never get tired one of these days. One of these days. You know that I'm gonna view that holy city. I'm gonna view that holy city. View that holy city. Sing and never get tired. We're gonna sing and never get tired. Sing and never get tired. We're gonna sing and never get tired. One of these days. One of these days. Thank you, men. Thank you, guys. I've never seen the choir get back in the room quicker than today. They wanted to hear that song. And some folks were in the first service. You, you hung around to hear it again. Thank you for being here today. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to the book of Psalms, number 137 this morning, and get the listening guide out. It's on the back of the order of worship. And if you want to take some notes, then just do that. If, you, if that's not how you learn, if that's not how you listen to sermons, that's all right too. You just listen and pray that God will say something to you. It has been said that every preacher only has five or six sermons. And uh, what we do is we just change the titles and change the scriptures, but it's the same essential five messages. And I shouldn't tell you this, but that's true. But I tell you because this may sound very familiar to you today. It's because this is one of the recurring themes in the preaching that I've tried to do here now almost 11 years. We're talking about uh, relocating. I think it's going to be helpful to you because we've got people in the room right now who have just relocated to the D.C. area. Others in the room are on their way out. You're leaving us. For, for other parts of the country and other parts of the world, this message is for you. Do you know about the lifespan of salmon, the fish salmon? Especially up in Alaska where they just thrive. Salmon eggs are laid in the gravel of the streams and rivers. They hatch and then they begin their journey downstream toward the ocean. As they get to the ocean, their bodies change They've been living in fresh water. Now they are adapted for salt water. And they begin swimming all over the vast Pacific Ocean. For five years, they journey thousands of miles. And then at the end of about five years, they make their way back. 
They find that original stream. They try to get up the stream. Many can't make it. But those that do come to the place where they were hatched originally, within feet of where they were originally hatched. They spawn, they die, and the cycle goes on. Have you ever felt homesick like those uh, salmon in Alaska? You're far away from home and you want to get back home. If you haven't seen the movie, it came out in the 1980s, The Trip to Bountiful. It's probably on Netflix or you can find it somewhere. The Trip to Bountiful. An aged woman wants to go home one more time to see the little town, to see her home place one more time before she dies. Have you ever felt like that? Homesick. Maybe when you went to Centricid this summer. It was your first time. Were you a little bit homesick? Or you spent the night at a friend's home away from mom and dad for the first time you were homesick. The children of Israel in Psalm 137 are homesick. This is one of the places in the Old Testament that is so easy for us to date because of its subject matter. We know that it was written somewhere between 587 in 539 B.C., the children of Israel are POWs. They've been taken from their land into Babylon. This is the Babylonian captivity. They're not happy about it. They don't want to be there. They want to be home. But this is where they find themselves. Join me there, 137, verse 1. By the rivers of Babylon we sat and we wept when we remembered Zion or Jerusalem. There on the poplars we hung our harps, for there our captors asked us for songs. Our tormentors demanded songs of joy. They said, sing us one of the songs of Zion. But how can we sing the songs of the Lord while in a foreign land? If I forget you, O Jerusalem, may my right hand forget its skill. And may my tongue cling to the roof of my mouth if I do not remember you, if I do not consider Jerusalem my highest joy. They want songs. Well, if I forget Jerusalem, I won't be able to sing songs ever again. My hand will be crippled so it cannot play the harp, and my tongue will be paralyzed that it cannot sing. These people are homesick. If you're getting ready to go off to the university, you're going to be in a strange land, in a strange place. You may be homesick for a while. If the government is moving you from your current job, maybe in the military or serving in, in civilian government, and you're getting a new assignment, you're going to be homesick. You who have been a part of this church and are leaving, and so many are this year, you're going to miss us. We're going to miss you. Every Sunday now, somebody in the lobby will stop me, and they'll say, well, Pastor, this is our last day here at First Baptist. And they almost always have tears in their eyes. And they quickly say, now, we're not sorry to be leaving Washington. We're not sorry about leaving the traffic and the beltway and the pressure, but we're going to miss this church so much. Homesick. You know, you might feel homesick right here in our own country because you see a world, you see a culture that's so different from the America you grew up in morally in so many ways. It's hardly recognizable. You feel like a stranger and an alien, a pilgrim in this world. And you're wondering what happened. You're homesick for another time, for another place. Well, if that's you this morning and you, you're relocating or you have relocated to our area, this psalm is going to help us. Get out your listening guide. Three things I want to give us this morning. Number one, if that's you, then accept the situation you can't change. Accept the situation that you cannot change. You know Niebuhr's serenity prayer, O oh God, grant us the serenity to accept what cannot be changed, the courage to change what can be changed, and the wisdom to know the difference. If you can change it, then, I mean, what are we talking about? You just change it. 
you do something you want to do. I'm talking about when you can't change it. You're where you need to be right now. Accept the situation. I met somebody back in the hallway after the last service. He said, Pastor, I'm new here. This was a perfect sermon for me. I said, I left something out. I, I meant to say, I'll, I'll say it to you. Make the decision that you're going to love it here. Just decide. You can do that. You can choose your response. You can choose your attitude in any situation. Choose to love it. When you can't change the situation, let your heart change to meet the situation at hand. Something I admire about these Israelites, their tormentors demand of them songs, and they're taunting them. Hey, sing us one of your songs of Zion. How can we do that? They answered. I like that. They refuse to be made entertainment. They refuse to become an, a sideshow, a minstrel show. No. They kept their dignity. Wherever you are, keep your dignity. They wouldn't sing the songs. But part of me wonders, maybe because they wouldn't sing the songs of Zion, they missed an opportunity to give a witness. Maybe if they'd sung about God, Jehovah God, and Jerusalem, and their home, maybe they could have won some hearts. Paul the Apostle knew how to do that. He and Silas found themselves in yet another jail in Acts chapter 16 in Philippi. And at midnight, they're in the innermost prison cell, and they are singing. They're singing praises to their God. They're singing about Jesus. And the other prisoners are listening. And the guard is listening. So after the earthquake, when nobody ran, the guard came running in and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved. He'd heard about Jesus in their singing. Keep on singing wherever you are. Sing of home. Sing of your faith. But there's something else. Attempt to bloom where you are planted. Wherever you are, attempt to bloom. Shine for Jesus. This is God's will for you now. Maybe not next year, but now. So be fully engaged. Don't watch the clock and count the days. Don't put your life on hold. This is where God has planted you now. And so decide you're going to make the most of it. You're going to love it, and you're going to blossom. Turn to that great passage you hear so often, Jeremiah chapter 29. Turn over there, Jeremiah chapter 29. This is the same time period. This is the same situation. These children of Israel have gone into Babylonian captivity. Somebody had told them, it's not going to last that long. Just a few months, a few years. It'll all be over. You'll be back home. Jeremiah says, they're false prophets. That's not true. You're not going to be here just a few months, just a few years. You're going to be here for 70 years. And those who heard that as adults, I guess the children, I'm not sure what they thought, but if you heard it as an adult, then you knew what that meant. That meant you're never going home. You're going to be there till the day you die. You don't have 70 more years. Listen to what the Scripture says, chapter 29, verse 4. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. Marry and have sons and daughters. Find wives for your sons and give your daughters in marriage so that they too may have sons and daughters. Increase in number there. Do not decrease. Also, seek the peace and prosperity of the city to which I've carried you into exile. Pray to the Lord for it, because if it prospers, you too will prosper. Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says. Do not let the prophets and diviners among you deceive you. Do not listen to the dreams you encourage them to have. They are prophesying lies to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. This is what the Lord says. When 70 years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place 
For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. You can always have hope, but these people are not going home. So what does the Lord say? You're in Babylon, so blossom there. Go ahead and buy a house. Settle in. Go ahead and get married. Have children. Have children in a world like this? Yes, go ahead and have children. And, and watch them grow up and give them in marriage. And pray for Babylon. And if God blesses Babylon, then you live there. God's going to bless you. Have you considered that? You've been grumbling and complaining about where you've got to move or that you've moved here and you don't like it. It's not like home. Don't do that. Decide you're going to love it. It's in God's hands, and it may be a long time, a short time, but blossom where God has you planted. And here's one of the best ways to do it. You can blossom by getting involved in a church where you are living. And I've got a suggestion for you. i got one to recommend. Why not this one? You live here. Why not get involved here? And don't just come. You, you've done that. You, you're here today. But join the church. Plant your life. Because as you join and really become involved, then you can really blossom. You say, but pastor, we're only going to be here for three years. That's fine. That's most people. Go ahead and, and serve those three years here with us. And then you'll be a part of, of making the world a better place. You can make our city a better place. You've got gifts that you carry from city to city, and you never put into Christian service for the Lord in a church. Make a difference this time. Come and join us. Get involved with us in the great work that God is doing here. You see, you don't just come to church to... Listen to good music like you've heard this morning or preaching. That's not really the reason. You can do that by watching television or going online at 11 o'clock on Sundays. You can, you can hear the music and hear the sermon. But that's not what church is about. Church is where you love one another. It's where you honor and encourage one another. It's where you make a difference in somebody else's life. It's where you touch and are touched. It's where you have an investment. You need to be here. You need to be involved. And when you plant your life in a local church, you're doing what God told these people to do. Plant and then watch what happens. Make that choice. Attempt to blossom where you are planted. And here's the last thing. All that being true, always remember home. Always remember home. You who are moving away from us, we're going to leave the light on in the steeple for you because uh, we hope you'll be back and you'll be able to find us and we'll rejoice when we see you again. Always remember home. Remember where you came from. I distinctly remember when I left for the university years and years ago, my parents drove me to Richmond to 923 West Franklin Street in Richmond, helped me unload my meager things and then... As they were getting ready to drive off, my father shook my hand and with tears in his eyes said, Now, Don, remember who you are. Remember who you are and where you came from. And I did. Remember the values that you got from back home, the things you learned back at that Baptist church in Mississippi or Texas or Arkansas. Those values that are so true, the faith that was given to you by your parents and grandparents, remember home. When George Schultz was Secretary of State for the United States, one of his duties was to send ambassadors to other countries representing our nation. And just before the newly appointed ambassador would leave, they would have one little more interview with George Schultz, and so they would come in. And what he would always do... He had a big world globe in his office. He would point to it and he would say, now, before you leave, I got to know that you know where your country is because, you know, not everybody would. They were appointed for this reason or that reason. I want you to go over there and uh, point out your country. And they would always do that, France or Great Britain or, or wherever. 
Mike Mansfield came in for his final interview, and Schultz did the same thing. Go over there and show me your country. He walked across the room, and he put his finger squarely on the United States of America. He said, that is my country. He was remembering home. I want you to always remember home. When John McCain was serving time in the Hanoi Hilton during the Vietnam War, tortured often, he had a little strip, a little piece of cloth from an American flag, and he would tack it up in his cell. And every morning he would begin by pledging allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. You never forget home. So remember where, you, where you've come from, but here's the last thing. Remember where you're going. And we've been singing about that all morning. Remember where you're going. This earth is not my home. I'm just passing through. In Colossians chapter 3, Paul the apostle said, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. In Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, he said, our citizenship is in heaven. And we look for a Savior from there, Jesus Christ. You have dual citizenship today. You're a citizen of the United States or whatever country you're from, but you're also a citizen of heaven. If you've embraced Christ as your Savior and Lord, your citizenship is already there. And one day when Christ appears or you die first, then heaven is your home. There's a land that's fairer than day. By faith, we see it afar. And when the roll is called of yonder, we will be there. Every 4th of July, most every 4th of July, part of my tradition is to go out to Mount Vernon in the morning. In the afternoon, I may go over to the National Mall for the fireworks, but I didn't do that this year. You probably didn't either. But in the morning, I, I went to Mount Vernon. And I go so often, I don't have to go through the house anymore. I just sit on that beautiful porch and pretend it's all mine. And I talk to the tourists, and I give my own side tour to them because I love the place so much. But the reason I go on the 4th of July is because on the 4th of July at 11 o'clock, they have a naturalization ceremony. 100 new citizens take the oath, they take the pledge, and they become citizens. And it was so interesting this year as I listened to every word that was spoken and all the things they do. They renounce their citizenship from back home. They promise to do things. You ought, to, you ought to look it up and see what you're committed to do as a citizen. They take it very seriously. And then it was time for the Pledge of Allegiance. So everybody stood and the, the person behind the, uh, the lectern said, now here's what we do. We stand and we put our hands on our hearts and we look to the flag and we recite the Pledge of Allegiance, and we all did it together. When it was over, I, uh, I went over to where the 100 or so were, and uh, I just went up and down the rows shaking their hands, kind of like I do here on Sunday, welcoming them as citizens of the United States. We're so glad to have you. Welcome in. Welcome. And they're all so happy. They're smiling broadly. Their families are there, and they're so proud. And they're taking pictures, so I offer to take pictures of them so that they can have the whole family in the frame. And I hear their stories. Where are you coming from? And they're coming from different countries in Europe, Spain, uh, France. They're coming from uh, Pakistan and, and other countries all around the world. And, uh, and they love home. They love where they've come from, even if they were fleeing persecution, they still love their country, but now they've got a new country that they love even more. They're citizens of the United States. Well, that's us. We love our country, but we've got another citizenship. One day, we will be in the presence of the Lord forever. Homesick no more. So we're all relocating in a way. Some are coming, some are going. One day we'll all go to be with our Lord. I want us to pray now. Would you bow with me, please? We're going to sing in a moment. I'm going to be at the front of this room. And in the first service, we had three adults come to unite their lives with ours. Maybe you're ready to do that. You want to be a part of a church where you live for however long you are here we would open our doors to you if you're a Christian. 
If you've given your life to Christ, but you've not been baptized, you ought to come and take your stand, and in weeks to come, we can baptize you. Every Christian needs to be baptized as, as a witness of their faith. Or if you want somebody to pray for you, this would be the time and this would be the place. You come. Father, bless in these moments. Give courage for those who need to respond. And Lord, work in their lives a mighty work today. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Let's stand and we sing. Me close to you, never let me go. I lay it all down again to hear you say that I'm afraid. You are my please pray with me Heavenly Father we're so thankful that we can come before you today and that we can praise you for such a wonderful week of vacation Bible school we thank you for the many workers who put in so many hours and so much more love into the work they did and Lord um, that work is is already um, producing fruit and we're so thankful for that we're also thankful for the thousands who were able to gather on the mall yesterday to um, focus on prayer and um, repentance for our nation. And while we're praising you for these wonderful things, we're also um, bringing to you our tears with our friends and our family um, in France and in Turkey, and even in my hometown, Titusville, Florida, today, where it's just senseless tragedy has taken lives um, um, just for, for no reason, Lord. But throughout all of it, you're in control. You're, you are unchanging. You're everlasting, Lord. 
you tell us that um, we are going to have much tribulation in this world, but you have overcome the world. Lord, that gives us hope and that gives us motivation to keep moving forward. And we'd like to um, ask you to help us as you accept our tithes and our offerings, help us to use them in a way to further your kingdom and to bring salt and light into this world. We pray all of this in your name. Amen.